Well, anyway, I, I remember, remember my first. first. Ow. Think, uh, think it's probably gonna be Peter, right? Sorry, Cleveland. But I remember my first love. It was 1989. The golden age of Hollywood. The year of trope Beverly Hills, Fletch Lives, Gleam in the Cube, and a hilarious new addition to the Harry and the Hendersons franchise. Harry meets a girl, Bigfoot? Count me in! Well, that's what I thought, anyway. Turns out Harry was shorter in this movie, but he did look marvelous. And the actress? Oh, my gosh. <gasps> oh. You know how I always wanted to marry a woman who looks like the full house baby? Well, this was her. Meg Ryan. Swing, I said, being the first person who ever said that. Ha <laughs> ha, that guy's the first person to ever say that. Wow, you're hilarious. What's your name so we can tell everyone that you were the first? Ah, oh, come on, guys. I don't care who gets the credit. This is making your story less credible. Anyway, from the first time I saw Meg Ryan pout in When Harry Met Sally, I knew I wanted to see her pout in every movie and then eventually change her face so she's incapable of pouting. <sighs> Nothing better than movie theater popcorn. Some for me, some for the cleaning guy. Some for me, some for the cleaning guy. So you must really like this movie. I... Are, are you... Are you talking to me? I gotta talk to somebody. He's about to do a 20-minute song parody of the 1988 Oscar nominees. Broadcast news to the left of me, fatal attraction to the right. Here I am, moonstruck in the middle with you. Come join me, Peter. It's a 1980s movie, so there's lots and lots of 1940s music. What's that guy doing? He's ruining the movie. Joe, come quick. It's Dancy. So that happened. <laughs> I've never heard that. You're the first. Peter Griffin's the first. Oh, come on, Meg Ryan. It's not about that. Yeah, you, you gotta stop doing this, Peter. That day we talked and talked as an unrealistic amount of leaves fell around us. Hey, thanks for walking me around in this watered-down Woody Allen movie. You're welcome, Peter. But what do you think? Can a man and a woman just be friends without the sex? Oh, uh, yeah, uh, sure, yeah. M men and women can just be friends. But, like, the fourth or fifth friend you call. What do you say, Peter? Friends? Friends with benefits? Benefits? No. I was going to say benefiber. I've been getting wicked stopped up lately. Ew. Welcome to being friends with a guy, Meg Ryan. Me and Meg Ryan had a special connection. I even followed her into other movies, like Sleepless in Seattle, which ends on the top of the Empire State Building. Gee, Pop, I'm sorry I left my backpack just laying around at the Empire State Building, which is an actual plot point from the film. Don't worry, it's still just the 1990s, so it's okay to abandon your backpack in big city landmarks. See something? Say nothing. That's the 1990s New York way. Hey. Hey. Ah, this is our last chance to look at Brooklyn before Lena Dunham gets there. I also followed her to You've Got Mail, where I drove her little bookstore out of business before my big bookstore went out of business. Also, I DM'd her on my 8-inch thick laptop. As always, I wrote to her as friends. Just friends. It seemed like we'd be just friends forever. But then came the movie that changed everything. The most important film of all time. In the cut. Because naked! It's just ever since we met, you've been my best friend. And I was always afraid of damaging that because I don't want to risk this connection. Shh, 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 shh. Hey. Shut up, Meg. Excuse me, sir. Sir? Wake up, sir. Turns out I never did get pulled up into that movie screen. I had just Pee Wee Hermaned myself in the theater and fell asleep. <laughs> What's going on here? Um, I'll have what she's having? And that's when my doctor said you can't drink and do Ambien. So there you go. My first love, Meg Ryan. Or maybe Melanie Griffith. You know, now that I'm thinking about it, did you see Body Double? Good God. That's a wonderful story, Peter. I'm always happy just to listen and be here for you.
Donna says hi. Is it okay if I tell my first love story? If it wasn't good enough to tell in one of the 88 episodes of your show, maybe it's not good enough for us. Could you guys do me a favor and laugh like I'm telling you a hilarious story? <laughs> <laughs> see, I get a flashback too. I don't see nothing. The end. So the lesson there is, if you steal, you better be ready to murder too. What do you say we read another one? Wow, you got a great view into Bonnie's window from here. Man, how do you get any work done? What do you mean, Lois is prettier than Bonnie? Oh, I get it. It's worse, but it's different. Okay, all right, so that's something. Okay. Oh, I got out in a car to take a leak because I've been drinking, and I didn't know it was next to a children's park. But anyway, that's why this he has to watch whenever I play with you. Both hands on the book, please. It's my son! Come on! Jeez. Thank you, Maya. All right, the next story is Little Red Riding Hood. Red Riding Hood was choosing her clothes for a journey across the forest. You know, if I had the guts, I would be Little White Turtleneck. And by guts, I mean body. Red, don't forget this basket of food for Grandma. This whole thing is way too heavy. Why are you putting a bag of ice in here? Is this, is this a Coors party ball? Is Grandma going to be entertaining Florida jet ski people? Remember, stay on the path and you'll be fine. Oh, yes, great advice from Mother of the Year. You do realize Grandma lives 68 miles away, right? You're sending your child out there to die. Ta la 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 la, skipping song, skipping song. No one's here to call me gay. If you were my son, I would kill you. Really? Because I hear your son is a sap. <laughs> if you're gonna hit the king, you better kill the king. Roar! Oh, hey, you're the wolf, right? Yep, and don't forget big and bad. Grrr! <laughs> no. So, um, what happened with you and those three little pigs? Why, why did you want to eat them so badly? <sighs> It, it's so amazing that that's what people think happened. First of all, I didn't want to eat them, all right? I wanted to talk to one of them. About what? Well, she was my ex-girlfriend, and I believed I was due an explanation about why she was such a <laughs> whore. All right, well, I'm off to my grandmother's. But before I go, I better take a deep woods dump. Her bathroom is right off the dining room, so it's either now or three days from now. Going, dear. I gotta go check on my shoe apartment complex. Old woman breathes like a gopher. Hello? Is anyone home? I no no. I can hear the muffled Mexican music. Look, if you guys don't shape up, I'm gonna rent this place to Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Ooh, this is nice. It's every bit as darling as you said. They're gonna fix up the place. Who is it? It's your granddaughter, Red. How do I know it's you? Oh, come on, that's a perfect imitation. Open up, I brought strawberry shortcake and Cool Whip. And what? Oh, sorry, I mean Cool Whip. That's my little girl. Oh, my. Come in. Who the hell are you? Why, your grandma, of course. All right, fine, I guess we're doing this. My, what big eyes you have, Grandma. All the better to see you with, my dear. My, what big, you know what, I, I'm sorry, I, I can't. I, I can't do this. My, I, I'm, I'm not an idiot. My, my grandma is a human woman. How, how is this ever a scene? All right, fine, yes, it's me, the wolf. Must we go through this charade? It's insulting. I don't know why you're complaining. I'm the one who's about to get violently bisected by the woodsman. What woodsman? <laughs> You know, I'm not sure if that's our hero or just a lunatic going house to house murdering people. <laughs> yeah, he, he just did it again. I think we should. I think we should call somebody. 